Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, and welcome to another edition of Hawaiian Uniform. I'm your host, Calvin Griffin. And uh, for those of you who may have seen the program before, which I can't imagine who doesn't watch it, but anyhow, um, during the program we talk about a lot of issues concerning military and veterans. And today I have two special guests, one by phone and also one in the studio, Mr. Uh, Dennis Ige, uh, the, the regional chapter of NAUS. And um, I'll let you say something in a moment. And also we have Ms. Um, Deborah Bouquets, who is with the uh, marketing director for the U.S. Marine Corps Community Services. Uh, Ms. Bouquets, are you there? I'm here, good morning. Uh, okay, uh, just in case if I screwed up your title, if you can just tell, tell them your position again and how, how a little bit about yourself. Um, my name is Debbie Bookcats, as he said, and uh, I'm the marketing director with Marine Corps Community Services here at Marine Corps Base Hawaii at Kaneohe Bay. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I do is a promotion of events and programs for the Marine sailors and family members who are stationed with the Marine Corps here in Hawaii. Um, so it, a lot of folks out in the public don't necessarily see it unless it's an air show or a bay fest. Mm -hmm. But what we do on a regular day-to-day -day basis is everything that covers from uh, cradle to grave. We take care of childcare and new parenting all the way through education and counseling, recreation programs, leisure activities, you name it. If it touches morale, welfare, or recreation, we do it. Great, okay. May I call you Debbie? Yes, you may. Okay, well Debbie, I also have uh, Dennis uh, Ige in, in the studio, and he's, uh, Dennis, you were um, in the Navy before, right? Right. Uh, how many tours in NOM did you do? Uh, two. Two? Okay, I know it's hard to have to one, you lose count. Okay, uh, Debbie, what are some of the, uh, there's an event that's coming up, of course, this year, or I think started last year, the commemoration of certain events that happened in Vietnam and uh, celebrating the service of the men and women that uh, served over there. Uh, but could you tell us about the event that's coming up and how it, um, it's coming along? Absolutely. So March 29th was declared as National Vietnam War Veterans Day. And uh, this year, the um, commission, the Vietnam War Com Commemoration Commission is partnering with all branches of armed forces, and they're asking us to find unique ways to honor our Vietnam veterans between March 25th and 29th in honor of this special National Vietnam War Veterans Day. So here at K-Bay, what we've decided to do is to reach out to the veteran service organizations and find out, you know, what would, what would ring true for them? What would be something that they would like? And um, we were told a concert. So we are doing a concert event with information booths with service organizations to share with national, to share the information with all of our Vietnam vets mm -hmm. uh, here at Marine Corps Base Hawaii on March 29th. It's from 4 to 8 p.m. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our uh, Vietnam veterans, we realized they didn't serve their full 20 years, so they may not have access to a military installation on a regular basis. So right. we are offering shuttle service to bring our vets to the event to enjoy this free concert and to, we'll have some memorabilia booths where they can come out and kind of talk, enjoy some camaraderie. And what we'd like to do is, as our part of joining the nation to thank our Vietnam veterans, we would like to offer them their veteran pins while they're here. We have some other collateral and bumper stickers that we'd like to share with them. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for ways to reach out to the veterans and let them know, hey, we can bring you to the base. Right, okay. I know that, uh, of course, we, when people think about Vietnam and the uh, people that served there, uh, there were a lot of women who served over there. So are there any uh, groups that's gonna be represented at the event, um, you know, that mainly have uh, women members? 
It's funny that you say that. My first contact that I reached out to was uh, Ms. Rona Adams, who is the president of the Vietnam Veterans Oahu chapter, and she has been a, a whirlwind and a blessing in helping to get the word out. So she's definitely going to be there and has reached out to so many others who have served. She herself is a veteran um, serving two terms, I believe, as a nurse during the war. Yeah. Yeah, known her for quite a while. She's a very dynamic um, individual. Yeah. Um, I know with all the different things that's going to be going on at the event, um, again, to showing the appreciation to the, the veterans, is there going to be anything in place where uh, they can relive, or not relive, but um, share some of their experiences, uh, you know, for future generations? What we're hoping is that they will uh, share their stories with our, our young audience. Our, our Marine base tends to be a very young audience of new folks coming in every year. So our population is, is very much so those young Marines who are E5 and below. And to have an opportunity to be sharing their stories kind of helps to to build resiliency and readiness by just sharing, you know, what what happened in past contexts, and, and it's a learning experience, an educational experience. Right. So we would like to encourage that conversation between the, the generations. Right. Okay. Uh, is there, um, you mentioned, of course, this is um, as far as access to the base. If there are any civilians out there, is, do they have the opportunity or uh, it's not available at this it, time? It, no, it is not open to the public. Okay. Unfortunately, this is um, a closed event for military only. It is. Uh, we are offering shuttle service for Vietnam vets and their families. Mm -hmm. um, we need them to call us to reserve seats mm -hmm. to be on the buses, if I could give you that number. Yes, let me put it up. It is 808-254-7679. Okay, and if you could repeat that one more time. 808-254-7679, and then we'll be able to get um, reservations placed to be able to have these folks access the installation. Great. Uh, being in the position that you are right now, what do you find most enjoyable about your job? I think what I find most enjoyable here is um, every day there's something new that we're doing. Mm -hmm. uh, it doesn't matter if it's three-on-three -three basketball or something for our single Marines and sailor. Um, it's interacting and being able to provide service. Um, I enjoy being able to share everything that we have available. I grew up as a, a military brat in a Marine Corps family, and there is so much that we offer now that didn't exist back in my day. Mm -hmm. So I find it to be a unique thing that I can say, hey, did you know you could spend uh, your three years while you're here in Hawaii and you could learn how to surf or you could learn, you could get your boating license, you could learn to golf. There's so many things we could do for you. Yeah. Uh, and we make their tours more enjoyable. Yeah. What are some of the other things that people don't know about what, uh, you know, that uh, is offered as far as morale for the, for the, uh, for the troops? You know, for, um, for people who have come out to the base for our large events that have in the past been open to the public, we've done Kaneohe Bay Air Shows, which draw 150,000 people to the base, uh -huh. or a Bay Fest where we'd have concerts and draw maybe 30,000 or more people to the base. But on a regular basis, we also offer um, counseling services. We offer child care. We have um, three child development centers on the base. Because some of my, so many of our Marines are young and they're young family members, we have an ele elementary school, so we have all their kids that are there. We have the daycare that we take care of them in the CDCs. We have um, new parenting, where if you're just now becoming a parent, we send counselors to come help you prepare and check in on you if you need help. Um, if parenting's not your thing, you know, we have education centers, so we can help you to work towards your degree so that you can better your experience when you get out of the service. All right. Um, it's, good, it's good that there's a lot of, um, well, a lot of different issues that's going on that concern not only troops in the uh, Marine Corps or Navy and Marine, I mean, yeah, Marines. Um, but overall, there's some systemic things that came up, and it's good to hear that there are certain programs that's being put in place that really address these issues. Uh, is there anything else as far as, you know, that we, that we would like, that we should know? Um, you know, if you folks know any veterans who might want to come out and be a part of our event, 
please do uh, reach out to us. You can go to our website for more information also. It's um, mccshawaii.com. Okay. Um, if we have some veterans service organizations who would like to reach some of these veterans and be, have a table to. Okay, I think we may have a technical problem. It seems like it. Okay, we're good. Anyhow, soon as we get Deborah back, anyhow, um, what were some of your experiences when you were in Vietnam? What was available to you when you were for morale that well, you could talk about on the, the air? Thing, well, <laughs> <laughs> the thing we appreciated the most is the, the mail service. Yeah. And uh, we were pretty well taken care of. They, they worked us to death, but, uh, but we did it with a, a pretty much of a great exuberance. And otherwise, I don't think we would have survived. Yeah. So some of us come out of it stronger. Um, a few probably didn't do so well, and maybe they're still suffering today. Yeah. Uh, they may uh, got, but being on a ship, unless you were hit, uh, there there wasn't really too much trauma, mm -hmm. uh, and there wasn't a lot of drama after you got into. What, what your mission was and what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. Uh, it was like being in a John Wayne movie, except you had a part to play, and it was vital that you did your best. Yeah. And, uh, and and that's my recollection. Uh, the first ship, we arrived in time to celebrate Tet, and we did that by, by shooting five-inch 54 projectiles into the rice fields mm -hmm. and wherever we were directed uh, in opposition to uh, Ho Chi Minh and his crew, yeah. who wanted us out of there and it took them 10 years but they they finally succeeded sure. uh, what was the name of the ship that you were on i was on the uss buchanan mm -hmm. uh ddg 14 mm -hmm. and the second tour tour was relatively safe uh on the uss kiska ammunition ship uh hull number ae 35. yeah okay i think we're still trying to get deborah back but in okay. the meantime um of course, being the regional president for NAUS, you're a part of other organizations also. Is there anything that's going on with some of the other groups that you may be involved with, uh, and, you know, as far as connection with the uh, commemoration ceremonies that's going on for the Vietnam vets? Uh, I do not, but I do, I am, they do have uh, the World War I commemoration 100th year uh, they have a bill in Congress, and uh, uh, we have our local chapter here has testified in support of that bill. Yeah. Uh, the issue, of course, is funding, mm -hmm. and uh, we have the memorial, World War One memorial, down there at the natatorium, yeah. and that needs needs to be brought back to life after uh, how many decades of, <coughs> of uh, neglect. Yeah, I uh, sit in on a couple of the. Uh, conferences they had. And for the life of me, I can't understand why they're dragging their feet on this issue. I don't know if it's political or economic or a combination of both. But political. Um, I think they, uh, for the past 50 years, they have been talking about what to do with this, you know, structure, you know. Mm. So, um, yeah, I know there's still efforts going on, but um, whatever is happening doesn't seem to be readily shared with the veterans or the community in general. So, I don't well, know. Well, what to do with the structure is what hasn't been done for 50 years. Yeah. Maintain it. Yeah. And it would, it would be a shining example of Hawaii's uh, dedication. And they, were, they were only a territory at the time, and uh, mm -hmm. we jumped in there, and I thought we did pretty good. Yeah. But uh, now we're in new yeah. times. Yeah, I think a lot of people, you know, get the misunderstanding of I, what I think is that the um, and some at the nanatorium and other structures that um, um, celebrate, I wouldn't say celebrate, I gotta find a dictionary to find the right word, anyhow, that uh, marks the involvement of the troops not only here in Hawaii but around, um, around the country. It's not celebrating war, but it's celebrating those who were uh, willing to go ahead and, you know, uh, to support what our system stands for. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yep. You, you did good. Yeah. Yep. That's yep. exactly. Uh, okay. Yes, we're we're not glorifying war. Yeah. We're we're memorializing those who went, mm -hmm. so we didn't have to go. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's important for the future because if you don't know your past, you don't know which way you're 
future is heading as far as down certain paths. Anyhow, uh, we're going to take a short break. When we come back, we'll continue our conversation with Mr. Agate, Dennis, to those who love him, all that good stuff. Uh, and uh, I think we may be having Deborah come back on, but we'll check and see what that. Great. But um, we'll take a short break and um, stay tuned to Hawaii in Uniform. Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Aloha, I'm Kili'i Akina, and I'm here every other week on Mondays at 2 o'clock p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii's Hawaii Together. In Hawaii Together, we talk with some of the most fascinating people in the islands about working together, working together for a better economy, government, and society. So I invite you into our conversation every other Monday at 2 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii Broadcast Network. Join us for Hawaii Together. I'm Kili'i Akina. Aloha. Hey, aloha. Stan the Energy Man here on Think Tech Hawaii, where community matters. This is the place to come to think about all things energy. We talk about energy for the grid, energy for vehicles, energy in transportation, energy in maritime, energy in aviation. We have all kinds of things on our show, but we always focus on hydrogen here in Hawaii because it's my favorite thing. That's what I like to do. But we talk about things that make a difference here in Hawaii, things that should be a big changer for Hawaii. Uh, and we hope that you'll join us every Friday at noon on Stand the Energy Man and take a look with us at new technologies and new thoughts on how we can get clean and green in Hawaii. Aloha. Okay, and you're back with Hawaii Uniform. And again, my name is Calvin Griffin, and today my two special guests are Mr. Dennis Ige and Ms. Uh, Deborah Buquetz, who's with the uh, U.S. Marine Corps Community Services. Uh, Debbie, I'm sorry, we got cut off anyhow. Was there anything that you, uh, of course, we didn't touch on that you'd like to get out to the public? Um, just to let us know if they'd like to be a part of offering a, if you wanted to have a service organization table to share information with the vets, mm -hmm. if, you're, if you have a, something that, needs, that is good in their hands, uh, give us a call or go to our website. I'm not sure if I got the website up before I got cut off or not, mm -hmm. but it's uh, mccshawaii.com mccshawaii spelled out, dot com. Okay. And uh, Again, the phone number, 808-254-7679. Um, give us a call if you uh, have something that you think would be good to put in front of our veterans and to share with them for this event. Um, we're also we're bringing in a few commercial sponsors who make sense for the event. So if you think that you have a business that would make sense to be a part of that, give us a call. Yeah. Uh, I know that you mentioned there's a shuttle that's available for uh, those the veterans who don't have ready access to the um, to the base, but is there anything that's in place as far as uh, for those who are severely handicapped that might want to be part of it? Uh, is there any type of shuttle system or something that can be worked out with the uh, um, some of the medical services? Um, we don't have anything like that set up at this time. Uh, okay. We did reach out to the handy van. They, they weren't able to do anything on a chartered basis, yeah. but I could certainly reach out again and see if that's something that we can make available. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to check and see, what, like, because there may be some people out there might have that, uh, you know, course question about uh, one of their relatives that may be in that position anyhow. Okay. Um, is there anything that we, uh, Dennis, you have something? R right. Debbie. Uh, you yeah. are aware that we do have a Vietnam Memorial on the uh, state capitol grounds? Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Too bad somebody didn't suggest that you do your concert there. That would have been... But you get another chance. Uh, <laughs> in the evening, uh, I think it's the day before Christmas Eve, or the evening, about 11 o'clock at night, when... Uh, the 23rd. The, uh, is it the 25th? 23rd. 23rd, yeah, uh, in the evening is when the Vietnam vets just quietly converge on this place, right? And 
they reflect and do whatever they do in, in view of all of those from Hawaii who are memorialized there. And who knows, maybe yeah. a concert uh, at that site, uh, you know, all you'd have to do is bring the band. You wouldn't have, I don't think you'd have to invite anybody. They all can make their way there. But just a thought. Yeah. And now, uh, some of the talent, you mentioned that maybe that will be at the event? We are, um, we're going to have uh, a retired Marine who has his own band coming out and he's going to play us some, uh, some rock and uh, his name is Aaron Johnson. Oh. Um, but our main act is uh, Augie Ray Fernandez, who himself is a Vietnam veteran, mm. and he is bringing his tribute to Motown show to us. Uh -huh. So we're excited to have that here as something that we can share with our past and present mm -hmm. military. Okay. I, I understand that Bob Hope, of course, is not <laughs> available for He'll the show. There. He'll but, be there. You know, in spirit, anyhow. Okay. Uh, <laughs> is, <laughs> okay. Is there any uh, other th anything else that we missed that you'd like to be, uh, of course, impart to our uh, our audience about uh, either the event or again some of the things that might be available to our our service members? Um, I think that that about covers it right now mm -hmm. for this special event. It's the first time we're doing something that kind of reaches outside of what our normal uh, audience is. So we're yeah. excited to to welcome our Vietnam vets to the base and. Uh, show them a little bit of love here. We want to have everybody feel good, and we certainly want to say thank you. Right, okay. Well, I'd like to say thank you to you and your staff, and like say for the Marine Corps, I mean, the way they're doing as far as trying to, you know, fill the needs in so many different ways for our service members that uh, inadvertently or in the indirect way have an effect on our communities also. Uh, just by setting the example about caring and, and sharing anyhow. But uh, again, thank you very much for your service. Thank you so much, Kevin. Okay, we'll be in touch, and uh, we'll get the word out there a little bit more often for uh, before the event happens. We certainly appreciate it. Thank you so much, and have a great day. Thank you. You did the same. Okay. And uh, you're going to show up? Over there? Yeah. Uh, I'll be in Washington, D.C. Oh, okay, that's right. I got you. Well, I'll be there anyhow, but uh, hopefully not, um, you know, okay. the way we get out there. It, we'll... it should be a great event. Yeah, good. Uh, we'll segue into something else. I know that you've been keeping an eye on what's happening legislatively. What's new that's out there that's affecting our vets, military, or all of us? Well, many years ago, when uh, Congresswoman uh, Tammy Duckworth, and she may be a U.S. Senator by now, I, I'm not sure if she transitioned or not, yeah. uh, and I had a conversation in her office at the Veterans Affairs uh, Department headquarters, mm -hmm. which is... Uh, just a walk through the park to the White House. Yeah, okay. Can you imagine that? How many people know that? Well, a few, but maybe not too many. Like many. But anyway, we discussed integrating the Defense Department and the Veterans Affairs Department health care database. Okay. Okay? And it took, according to Tammy, it took President Obama to bring the Secretary of Defense and the Secretary of VA together to shake hands that they would do this. And that's 10 years ago. There wasn't any coordination before? No. Or? And there still isn't. Now, <laughs> it's, it's kind of interesting that now mm -hmm. uh, the, the VA has always used the VISTA program to record their health care events, okay? Yeah. And it's been adopted I mean has accessible by private sector health care providers. Yeah. So there's but the military has always distanced itself and now they're asking the VA to spend billions of dollars, maybe only millions, okay, I don't want to exaggerate too much, mm -hmm. to modify VISTA and get used to doing what the military wants them to do, mm -hmm. as if the VA is dependent on the military. Well, I guess they are, right? Yeah. If you're in the military and you get sick or you get injured, then you go to the VA. Yeah. So it's like the VA is kind of like an auxiliary for the Defense Department. Yeah. They, what about the Choice Program? How's that coming along? Have you heard anything new on that? Any major changes that's coming about? Or um, is it, from what you hear, is it pretty successful or is it working? Is the system working? 
I'm not sure if the system is working or not because I haven't heard anybody really rave about it and yeah. I haven't heard anybody complain about it either. Mm -hmm. But I do know mm -hmm. that uh, the VA has established an office in Eva Beach off of Fort, Fort Weaver Road mm -hmm. at the Queens West Hospital. They yeah. have an office on the fifth floor yeah. in that building. And everybody knows about it except nobody knows about it. Mm -hmm. And there's no sign. Yeah. And I've asked, asked the State Office of Veteran Services, who they are our veterans advocates in this state, uh, why is this? And uh, I asked yesterday and the day before yeah. and now today, but they're going to get back to me. So maybe the next time we do a program here, we'll know why there is no sign or we may, I may drive by there. I drive by on Thursdays and Sundays to be, and I look right and I yeah. see the Queens Hospital and no VA. Okay. So you're not doing a drive-by, you're just driving by. Well, I'm doing a drive-by because I have somewhere else to go beyond that point. But okay. I, I'm always interested to know, when is the VA going to put their sign up saying we have an office here? Okay, yeah, we, okay. anyhow, uh, yeah, there's a lot of good programs out there. It seems things have fallen in place, but that still that disconnect about what services there, who's, who's um, implementing them, mm -hmm. and how to best, you know, advise our veterans. Uh, about what is available. Anyhow, we're getting down to the wire, but is there anything that you want to go ahead and share with it? I'm going to discuss uh, Vietnam warriors, uh, blue water sailors, mm -hmm. Tonkin Gulf warriors, if you will. Uh, why is the, uh, why are we still slow walking reinstatement of them as presumed exposed to Agent Orange? I think we've yeah. got enough deaths and diseases now that we could say maybe we made a, a wrong decision when we included boots on the ground in that position and uh, and so now blue water sailors they kind of have to find another way to get help from the VA when they become ill from okay. their Vietnam experience. Good. Well when you get back from Washington give us an update and um, Definitely. I'll be following through on a few things okay. also in the future about um, <coughs> Vietnam and uh, some other issues that uh, I think are a grave concern to our. It's about time, isn't it? You know, Vietnam time. 50 years ago, 100 years ago, World War One, the war, the war was supposed to end all wars. Yeah. Well, you see how it goes. I don't know. Anyhow, uh, I want to thank you, Dennis. I also thank Mitz uh, Bouquets for calling it. And uh, if you're available, go down and um, check out the event um, on the 29th. And we'll take it from there. But in the meantime, and on the twenty third, and of December, 23rd. yeah. Oh, well, if, especially if you're a Vietnam war, uh, Vietnam warrior. Okay. Anyhow, getting down to the wire again. Thank you very much for staying tuned. And again, this is Hawaii in uniform. Check us out on YouTube, Alolo, and also the other great programming here that um, has hosts that uh, deal with uh, a lot of the veterans' issues. But uh, as I say, God bless. And until that time. <laughs>